Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by. Welcome to the NFL conference call. During the presentation, all participants will be in a listen-only mode. Afterwards, we will conduct a question and answer session. At that time, if you have a question, please press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. If at any time during the conference you need to reach an operator, please press star 0. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded Thursday, July 23rd, 2015. I would now like to turn the conference over to Mr. John Zimmer. Please go ahead, sir. Welcome, everybody. This is John Zimmer from NFL PR. Uh, I'd like to congratulate one more time uh, Charles Haley and, and thank him for joining us today uh, for a national media conference call in advance of his, in, his pending enshrinement uh, to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Um, as Pascal mentioned, uh, we'll just open it right up into Q&A. Uh, so if you could follow his instructions on how to queue up and ask a question, uh, we'd appreciate it. And I'd like to thank all, all media who have called in to join us today. Uh, Pascal, you can go ahead uh, when you're ready. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to register a question, please press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. You will hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. If your question has been answered and you'd like to withdraw your registration, please press the 1 followed by the 3. If you are using a speakerphone, please lift your handset before entering your request. Once again, to register a question, it is 1-4 on your telephone keypad. One moment, please, for the first question. And our first question is from the line of Vinny Iyer with Sporting News. Please go ahead. Hello, Charles. Um, thanks for doing this, um, and congratulations on the Hall of Fame. Um, you've had a big transition in your career from a successful stint with the 49ers and went to the Cowboys. How do you think a player uh, right now, defensive end, uh, Greg Hardy, making that transition, what kind of impact do you think he can have uh, changing teams to go to Dallas? Well, yeah, you know, when I when I look at my career, I look at all the things I went through, um, you know, and I get a chance to talk to these guys a lot. And the thing that I tell him, you know, this is a fresh start, you know. Um, you know, Jerry Jones uh, picked me up from the airport, and uh, and he gave me his vision um, for for what he wanted for his team, and um, and. You know, and I told this guy they got a they got a champion in, in his corner, and um, Greg Greg is a hell of a football player, and I, I watched him on it at many camps and stuff they were doing this summer. He's the hardest working guy that I've seen in a long time, other than me. So I think he's going to be very impactful in in this season. All right, thank you. Thank you. Our next uh, question is from the line of Eric Branch with San Francisco Chronicle. Please go ahead. Hi, Charles. Obviously, the, the 49ers you know, traded you. Well, you were very much in the, in the prime of your career. But you finished your career with the 49ers. Eddie DeBarbo is going to uh, present you. How was that relationship with the team kind of repaired? I mean, were there any bad feelings when you were traded? And uh, if you just discuss. Uh, you know, what led you back to the 49ers and, and your relationship with uh, Eddie? Well, um, yes, it was a ton of bad blood. From, from my standpoint, um, when I left when I left California, I left California. Um, you know, I, I didn't, um, didn't talk to anybody there or whatever I had. Um, I was just mad at the world, and um, I never looked at my side of, of, of the uh, fence. Or on my side of the road, I just um, pointed the finger at everybody who, who I felt like um, betrayed me. Um, um, you know, I've never had a really strong relationship with Mr. D. Um, I would always see it, a lot of his events and stuff, but I started going to his um, charity events um, for about 10, 10, 12 years, and we 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 started that dialogue, that that conversation, and. Um, and you know, and and you know, I I, I realized why I, why I love the guy, you know, and um, you know, he's a, he's a very passionate guy, you know, um, you know, that, the only thing he knows how to do is is you know treat all of us like family. He treated the the best of us to the worst of us, just like we was his kids, and um, and you know, he gave us the best of everything, and um, and you know, and then you know, I, you know, he hired the great Bill Walsh man who. Um, who who's done done a ton of things for me, man. He was uh 
you know, he was a show that I cried on a lot. Um, and he would call me, he would call me when I was playing or when I was done and ask me, what do I need? How can he help me? You know, um, you know, Bill called me like a few days before he died <clears throat> and he was still asking me, Charles, what can I do for you? What can, how can I help you? And, um, you know, it, you know, it's, it's just hard. It's hard. Cause you know, I keep looking back, you know, ask myself, you know, I, I ask myself a lot, God, why why do you bless me like you do when I when I've done so many dumb things, you know? You know, why why Bill, why would you care about me like this? You know, when when you know, you know, I was only there three years with you and then I was gone and, and you know, now I I just I don't understand a lot of things. You know, God works in mysterious ways and um uh, you know, and um uh, I'm just honored. I'm honored to to be able to come back to the Bay. The prodigal son is coming home. I learned the foot game of football. I had two of the greatest coaches there. I played with some of the best teammates ever in the history. They were the hardest working men that I've ever been around ever in my life. And they pushed me to new limits and new heights. And, and they gave me the vision to be a champion. Thanks, Charles. Thank you. And as a reminder to everyone to register a question, it is 1-4 on your telephone keypad. Our next question is from the line of Skylar Dixon with the Associated Press. Please go ahead. Hey, Charles. Uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, following up on a little bit on what you were just saying, that, that you struggled to understand why they treated you as well as they did. It, did you come to understand that a little better? Uh, why they did, why, why they sort of welcomed you after the fact that as you had years to sort of think about it, did you did you get kind of a, a, an understanding of, of how it was that they treated you that way? Um, I, 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 I have, I, I have not, um, I, have, I have not, I, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's so many um, things that, that comes up, you know, it's like, you know, the Jones family, you know, I, I go over there all the time, you know, and, you know, Jared, Steven, and all those guys, you know, they open their arms up to me, you know, and I, I know that um, some of my actions, some of my behavior, you know, um, would, would seem like we're closing a lot of doors, man. And um, I, you know what, I stopped, asking, I stopped asking myself why. I just start saying thank you, God, for um but having all these people around me that care about me, because you know, um, you know, as I tell kids, I say, you know, um, when I went into the NFL, I was a 22-year-old um, um, athlete, but had an 11, 11 year old kid inside of me crying for help, but I refused to ask for it. And um, I think the people that reached out to me are, were were the people that saw me hurting. And knew that I needed help, but knew I was too, too dumb or uh, too weak to ask for it. And um, so, um, you know, regardless of why they did it, I, I am very appreciative. Um, I realized at this stage of my life that, you know, it's 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 better to uh, mend bridges than to burn them down. And and all those people that that helped me in my career, which is a lot, you know, the only thing I can tell them is thank you and I love you, and um, and you know, and try to do right by them. You've you've said several times that the Hall of Fame was sort of out of your control. Now that you have the nomination. Do you feel like it's it's sort of the ultimate stamp of approval on your career, or do you think you already had that by, for example, being the only one with five Super Bowl rings? Well, um, I you know this is an individual award, and um, and no matter how I felt, you know that I was maybe already um, a Hall of Famer. Um, you're not that until you're put there, and and this this is a new beginning for me because I I have a platform 
to to stand on some issues that I care about to help raise money, um, you know, for kids and 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 for uh, mental illness. You know, I I have so many things that I want to do, and um, you know, and I I think um, being part of the Hall of Fame, being able to team up with some of, some of the guys there to to try to tackle some of these issues along with the league, you know, it's, um, you know, I, I'm just excited guys. Um, you know, like I said before, um, I was, I was, I was talking to my mom. I said, I, I told her, I said, can you believe coming from Gladys, Virginia, going to James Madison university and then going into the NFL and now going into the hall of fame. And she said, boy, you blessed. The yes, ma'am. Thanks, I appreciate it. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Cam Inman with Bay Area News Group. Please go ahead. Hey, Charles, how you doing? Um, you were out at the 49ers, I believe, a couple months ago talking to some of the rookies. And what was the message that, that you shared with them? And is that along the lines of just the off-field stuff that you tell them to kind of rein in? Oh, I, hey, uh, I, I covered it all, man. I, I shot it to them straight, man. I told them about my successes and my failures. You know, I'm not, I don't preach to other people. I just tell them, I tell them what I did right and what I did wrong. And then, you know, and I tell them what my daddy says. It's two ways to learn from your mistake or somebody else's. And I like learning from somebody else's. So, um, and, you know, the, the hardest thing is these these young guys. They have a, a attention span of a five year old, and um, you know so, um, and you know I'm not I'm not the most gently and kind kind person to be able to sit there and deal with that crap. So, you know I'm a little bit more confrontational, but um, um, I think I got my point across, and you know and and some of the some of the kids when it was over. You know, they pulled me to the side and asked me a personal question. How how should they handle this? How should they handle that? You know, I, I think that you know, as as a professional athlete, as as guys that that done great things for that club, the club should open up the door and let these guys come back in, so we can teach these guys how to be a professional. You know, Bill Walsh, when I was there, that's. I mean, that door was wide open. All these great players kept coming back. He would bring all these great guys back. And that's how we learned. I didn't have to. Bill never got up there and told us how to be a champion. He let other people do that. And, and you know, and, and that's one of the things that I take away from um, one of the great things that he instilled in me is I'm not going to tell guys. I'm going to tell guys what I did. And then I, I'll tell guys, you know, this is this is all my mistakes. This is how I destroyed destroyed my life. This is how I build it back up. And this is how God blessed me. And um, and we, you know we go through it. And it's question and answer. If they got a question, I tell them don't ask a question they don't want to answer to. You know, and because um, I'm gonna give it to them straight. Charles, you did some work on the field also with Alden Smith. I'm just curious. What you've seen in him this off season since you've you've, you've tracked his career these last four or five years, and and what you think's in store for him this coming season? Well, you know, Alden Alden man, he's a very 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 talented um, young man. Um, he has he has a variety of skill sets. Um, he's very instinctive. Um, he just got to um, just got to stay on the field. You just got to stay on the field, you know. Um, you know he can't he can't allow um, other people to push him the wrong direction. Um, and you know I, I, the the bad part about about you know all of them is is that nobody's going to give him the benefit of the doubt if something happens because of of his past. And that's what I keep telling myself. You know what? Um, I said my past haunted me, but I said, but what I had I had to make a change. I had to sit down make a change and that, you know, and put my energy in into playing football and not into those people that tried to hurt me. And, um, and I said, you know, you get rewarded for that. I, I think the kid, you know, um, you know, and I'll talk to him, man. And, um, 
he's a really good kid, man. Um, you know, he's just been through some things. And um, and like I said before, um, and I try to, you know, what I try to tell these kids is, is that, um, you know, they think everything's unique to them. And I keep trying to let them understand that we've all been through a lot. And that, um, and as part of talking to the rookies, you know, I tell them, I said, man, you know, I say, uh, and I know they probably got mad, but I said, well, I said, why don't y'all act like the white guys? You know, I said, you never see them in the paper um, um, getting high or or, um, or or hitting people, doing all that stuff. I said, why don't y'all act like that? You know, they they all them, they looked at me crazy, but you know what? Um, hey, follow people that's going to do it right, you know, and, um, and, you know, I just did it for the shock value of it, but um, we need we need to um, have people to follow, set examples like Joe, Ronnie, Jerry Rice, Roger Craig, Keena, Eric, Michael Carter. You know, you got to have people that that stand for something, and in order that um, you may be able to follow behind them until you're able to um, lead yourself. Charles, you're gonna wear all five rings for the ceremony. Um, I don't think that's what it's about. I don't think it's about um, me shaming all the guys up on stage that don't have any, or me sh- me trying to uh, impress people with that. You know, m- my thing is, I love the game of football. I love the game of football. I love all those guys that sacrifice their body, family, and everything to become one of the greatest players to ever play in the NFL. You know, I have no time for, um, to you know, to sit there and try to make myself bigger than what I am. You know, I'm just honored to be there. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Our next question is from line of Josh Svetz with SteelersDepot.com and St. Bonaventure newspaper. Please go ahead. Hey, Charles, once again, congratulations on your induction. It's been a long time coming. Well, thank you. All right. Um, so you've admitted to wrong behavior during your time in the NFL to multiple teammates. Have you reached out and made amends with all of the former teammates you possibly could have wronged? And is there any teammates that – have decided that they don't want to uh, take your apology and the relationships beyond repair? Hey, you know what? I've, um, you know, the the thing that I do is, you know, um, I I just let people watch the way the way I am now and, and try to be a friend. I'm not, I'm not, you know, how, how many times can you tell somebody you're sorry? You know, the thing that people want to know is that that you have changed, and and that's that's what's important more to me is is that I have changed. And I I tell my teammates, I tell anybody, I say, you know what? I said I'm not going to have one foot in the grave, and one foot out. I'm moving forward. You want to move with me? I'm fine. I said, but I'm not going to turn around and let my mistakes that behind me catch back up. You know, because I've moved past that. So. um my teammates or whatever, man, they know when they come around me, man, you know, I go give them a hug or whatever. I go out my way um, to be supportive in all the events that they do. So um, if they don't know, they should know. And, um, and you know, and because and actions speak louder than words. And uh, I feel like from that standpoint that I've, I've done a lot. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. And there are no further questions. Okay, at this point, um, if anybody's got one last one and wants to chime in, um, we'll give it another couple of minutes, a couple of uh, seconds here. Um, but otherwise, I appreciate everybody joining us today. And we do have a follow up question from the line of Josh Svetz with SealersDepot.com and St. Bonaventure newspaper. Please go ahead. Okay, this will be our last uh, question for the call today. Thanks, All right, sounds guys. good. All right, Charles, so you've been outspoken about the NFL's substance abuse issues and concussion issues. Now that we've seen a few players retire early, three of them actually on your former team, the 49ers, do you think this will be a trend, and what are your overall thoughts on the early retirements of players? Um, you know, if, um, 
if the NFL wants to deal with concussion, um, the, the, the thing that they did wrong was this, and when they started doing defensive players, these receivers, the ball over their head, they don't even try to protect themselves. You know, it's, you know, they have to go back to the old way. You know, Bill Walsh taught you always protect yourself. These guys just run down the field like La La Land, thinking that a safety coming 25, mile, 25, 25 yards up can stop on a dime. You know, you have, to, you have to learn how to protect yourself. You know, you don't hit people below the knees. You know, uh, and the people that, that choose to um, retire because of, um, you know, they worried about concussion, hey, that's on them. Um, I love the game of football. I've 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 had um, numerous of concussions. I've I've had to um, sit in those rooms um, um, because the migraine headaches are so bad that I had to sit in there with dog glasses on and stuff instead of going to practice. You know, so I can just play. You know, and uh, you know, you know what what you get is you get these guys now. They're making way making a ton of money. So at some point, four or five years, you know, they got they got like fifteen, twenty million dollars saved up. So guess what? Yeah, they can make that decision then. You know, we didn't have that those choices when we played. And I just I just think, man, you know what? Um, you're taking away from the game because every guy that sits there and said, Well, you know, um, they're teaching the kids the wrong thing. What we need to teach the kids is how to be safe. The game of football is the, the best damn game in the business. And, um, and you know, um, when I do camps and stuff, I teach kids how to be safe. And and that's the key to everything is, is that, you know, it ain't by, you know, when I play, it's by any means necessary. Now it is, okay, protect yourself, and, and, and everything's going to be great. Thank you, Charles. No okay, problem. I'd like to thank everybody once again for joining us today uh, for, for the call with Charles, and, and thanks uh, in particular to Charles for making the time, and congratulations. Uh, audio on today's call will be available uh, by this afternoon on www.nflmedia.com. Thanks again for everybody for joining us. Ladies and hey, gentlemen, thank that does, does conclude the conference call for today. We thank you for your participation and ask that you please disconnect your line.